welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Talia's Fortune. Uh, that's right, we're going to be playing a Talia deck today. We're going to be combining Talia with Misfortune and playing a little bit more of an aggressive Talia deck. And so really what Talia can do at the top end, probably the best that Talia can do for us is copy Sandswept Tomb. I think this is really the card that we want to copy. So it's a five mana landmark. When your allies attack, you summon attacking 5-2 Ephemeral, the, sand, the Sandstone Charger. And so if we have that in play, then we can play Talia, copy that landmark, and then we get two Sandswept Tombs. And that should be pretty cool. Then we can have like multiple 5-2s attacking. Uh, besides that, another really good use for Talia is going to be, of course, with Ancient Hourglass, that we can um, hourglass something proactively, have the Stasis Statue in play, and then use Talia to copy this so we get an extra copy of whatever we hourglass. So maybe that's Misfortune. So we can get, you know, double Misfortune. That, that's like the, the ideal scenario, right? We have a Misfortune in play, we hourglass it, we Talia, now we have two Misfortunes in play, so that whenever we attack, we get two of those Misfortune abilities. And so that could be really cool. So that's that's like the ideal thing. But then even like Island Navigator is a summon. Um, Jaw Hunters is a summon ability to make more sea monsters. Uh, you know, we have some other good things to Hourglass as well. But really, Misfortune's the number one card. All right. So yeah. Besides that, you know, we'll have we'll be attacking. We have some scouts. We got Island three Island Navigator, two Razor Scale Hunter for some scouts for Misfortune. Plus we have some vulnerable stuff. Sand Spinner, uh, Rock Hopper can make some uh, vulnerable things. And then we also have um, Jaw Hunters being able to challenge and give us some more top end with some sea monsters. So yeah, we're not expecting this to be like the best deck ever. It's meme tier day though, but we're trying to find something to do with Talia. So let's try this one, Talia's Fortune. Here we go, we're gonna go play five games, just playing in normal, of course, today with it being meme tier day. Okay, so this is a deck that likes to block. Probably not a good matchup for us, a deck that likes to block. Island Navigator is important, but we, we really want to find Misfortune. There we go, there's Misfortune. See what we see. Beneath me and winds behind me. My face. Okay, well, that thing will have vulnerable for later. Because we ain't challenged that when it's a 3 6. No prey, no pay. So I think I just open attack. I think we open attack here. And then we have Hourglass to protect Misfortune. Ooh, double Hourglass now. I guess I have to let it die. If I save it with the second Hourglass, then I don't have... Then I don't have any protection for, you know, whenever they just challenge it with Grant, you know, whatever they play with Grand Plaza. So I think I'm just going to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't want Preservarium. So next turn we're going to have 5 plus 1 mana. Let's skip. Below. Yeah, this is a tough matchup. They do they do a great job blocking. And then that double single combat, that was pretty rough. And now with the Grand Plaza, they do a very good job attacking as well. So they get to choose what happens in combat whenever they attack, and they choose what happens in combat when they block. And so that kind of that kind of control is not easy to defeat. Worth 
Man, I forgot Sea Scarab. Forgot about Sea Scarab. Man, this thing's just a one mana card, and it's a 4 3. This is bad. So if I if I hourglass this, it's gonna be hush so it doesn't even come back and make another sea monster for me. This and open attack. The desert by my side. Okay. It's obviously pretty punished for, for playing the uh, Dune Keeper because then I don't get the island navigator. We're just trying to get damage in. Anyway, any way we can. Holding on to Island Navigator till after they attack. Crimson Bloodletter. hushes it's obviously really bad for me because then it doesn't come back it doesn't come back as a scout it doesn't make you know would have made the uh, the other thing so I should have just open attacked I guess yeah why don't I just open attack I had I even had ride negation protection. I don't know why I didn't open attack. Behold the sun's holy light. Daylight star. That was the very best possible card. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't open attack. <clears throat> I just got through this. Your favorite star. I created it. Eons old and still no manners. The constellations bow to me. Yeah, I threw this game. I don't know why I didn't open attack. The problem with attack with the scout is it puts them up to eight. I've been, I'm sorry, I've been thinking here. I've been just trying to think of like any kind of like, like what the best landmark that we could get with T Talia's champion spell. That's why I've been trying to think of like anything, any kind of landmark that can save us, that can. This is our way. Or 
We haven't ever seen what like what that last card was in their hand, whether or not that our open attack would have worked, but it looks like it would have. Yeah, it was just Priestess. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, I would have won if I would open attacked. Which is pretty crazy, our deck defeating theirs. So it shouldn't happen. But that cost me that game. Okay, Lissandra Trundle with Ionia. So obviously we're going to be playing Misfortune on three. So we want to have other attackers to go along with Misfortune on three. So I guess we're going to get rid of all those. Even though like this is a good Preservarium matchup, but you know, we want to be aggressive to start with. I could see maybe keeping one um, Preservarium, but... This worked out. You know, we got rid of the, the Preservariums. Now we got the Doom Keeper. Okay, thanks, Hope Send. Yeah, I missed that. Against me. Every raid is a path. All right, so I I think I want to keep like riding negation, quicksand hourglass, like these cards up. So I'm not gonna play the razor scale hunter here. Let's just attack. Keep all of our interaction available. We have you know pretty good attacks. Okay, since they're going over there, let's grant that vulnerable. Alright, good, not Ice Shard, good. I'm gonna skip. Alright, so still have Ride Negation and Ancient Hourglass available. Take Preservarium just in case things go wrong. This one's on the house. Don't get ahead of yourself. That was kind of a greedy attack by them. So usually like this kind of Ionia deck is like trying to play like the nine drop at the top end. Um, and so like if they just play like the you know like we have like right of negation for, for help protecting basically and so feel pretty good about just like you know we don't necessarily have to attack with everything. Right here we can get two attacks in. 
Because everybody plays like some kind of frostbite cards and everything. Let's go get the two attacks in. Okay. We'll start with this. One and one. This fortune's pretty good. Okay, another karma deck. Karma Kindred. This looks like spooky karma. So it should have plenty of like go hards, withering whales, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it does mean that like a regular old three one isn't as good, but. Ride negation should be awesome in this kind of matchup, but do we have to mulligan ride a negation? Maybe. Look for misfortune. I'll keep the preservarium. Keep the card draw. Yeah, Talia could put in some work this game. Man, this card would have been great against my Rock Hopper of just like turn the prey into vulnerable. Yeah, let's take Talia. This is not a good Rock Hopper matchup. There's a reason why I mulliganed the Rock Hopper. That is why. Alright, double Talia. Here comes leveled up Talia. Keep your eyes on the horizon and your feet on the ground. That's also gonna draw some cards for us. Together, we are stronger than stone, faster than the wind. Level up Talia drawn two. Can't do anything about that right now. I don't have hourglass available. Don't stand in my way. All right, so we're going to uh, barely have enough cards. Love the ride negation, of course. Devour. So 
their plan was to just go hard there, uh, 1-1. One, one. I think that was the original plan. Ooh, that's a good sign, because it's basically just like Vile Feast. It's the only card that saves Kindred. Alright, don't have it. Very good. Alright, this is a good sign for us. So let's go with the Tomb. I could, So I could Hourglass the Misfortune and then copy it with Talia, and so we can have two Misfortunes. But I think probably saving Hourglass is better and just playing the playing the tomb here. Yep, Karma Kindred. You got it, Beachy Rise, if that's what we're playing against. And they're a go hard deck. They played one go hard, one bile piece so far. One candle for every sun. Oh. So I can go hard. There's blood in the water. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. This is what our deck is trying to do. We got our Misfortune ability. This is awesome. We got our Sandstone Tombs. That should be lethal, right? Barely. Just enough. There we go. Look at Talia. Getting some wins. All right, two and one. We should do this more often. All right, Ezreal Timo. Okay, preparations is good. I mean, Hourglass can definitely be good here too, actually. Yeah, let's just keep all this. We have Higher Gun to be able to uh, challenge Timo if they play Timo in turn one, which they certainly do. Um, let's let that hit me first. Because it always puts the puff caps on top, right? Like, you always, like, draw the puff cap, like, right away. So now let's shuffle those puff caps away. Smart. Uh, let's go with the Jal Hunters. Gotta go fight Nezra with that. Alright, now, Vulnerable Teemo. Still, team will be vulnerable for a later turn. Armed and ready. Ooh, they're armed and they're ready. Alright, I'm going Rock Hopper here because I'm I'm always scared of. Bleh, I'm not scared of that card. But I'm always scared of Puff Cap Peddler. Now I have, and I basically I wanted to have the hourglass to go along with the misfortune to be able to protect it. Don't stand in my way. No. Let's go this way. I was thinking like troll chant wise of like not 
going the other way, but I guess I was wrong. That seemed like a good draw. Make it rain. I'm kind of surprised they didn't trade their 3-1 for my 3-1. Dang, they they furious though. They furious though. Save the, yes. Save the rain for us. You sound like. All right, so just skipping. Our best draw here is really just a spell. Put them down to two. So I think it's just the open attack. Is that four out of five? It's so close. If I if I do it on the preparations, though, it won't be the fifth one. Because we won't have room for the preparations. Yeah, we got the board space problem. And if I play Island Navigator to attack first, it's... Uh, Love you. It's only going to be attacks two and attack three for Misfortune, so it won't level up Misfortune yet. Oh, Peddler is the best card. Oh yeah, this is a play predict. You don't get to predict right away. Okay, there we go. That'll do. They're not even going to try to uh, see if I just draw all sorts of puff caps. Are playing against Mono Sharima. Talia V Sundisk. So I'm only getting Talia because, you know, it just costs a lot of mana and we don't have a landmark to copy. If it's made of sand, I can write. Beneath me. So oh man, my misfortune's gonna have vulnerable now, isn't it? Sharima, your emperor has returned. That's too bad. Destiny calls. Gonna catch the sky. Stand down. I'm very glad they attacked. I'm not sure they were supposed to. <laughs> the flight? I've never gotten the flight. So flight needs the Nexus Strike to then then draw one and then put in the top three cards. But however, I get to challenge the three one with the flight, so it doesn't Nexus Strike. So that means it's going to stay in play for me. When the flight gets shuffled back, it will not have scout anymore. It'll just be normal the flight. This is our win. Fresh out of mercy. All right, well we're fresh out of mercy. Don't touch it. Faithless creature. It's not safe. Yeah. All right, so they're gonna go down to nine. All right, they down to nine. Alright, so we can shuffle the flight back. Let it help you remember who you once were. Um Yeah, so Fortune's just gonna die. It is quite unfortunate. I 
Alright, 9 to 10. Close game. So I'm trying the higher gun, I'll just wait. time you've got dangerous eyes I like that not just the eyes you know oh no all right so bless is motion should have just attack before playing the higher gun Put him down to exactly eight. Deal, or I mean, deal exactly eight. Put him down to zero. That'll do. Wow, a four-one with a Talia deck. We didn't do a ton with Talia, but Talia did have the one game against the Spooky Karma. So four-one with a Misfortune deck. Yeah, you could say that, but also with a Talia deck. And remember. That one loss, that very first one, remember how I was all, like, mad at myself and everything? Because that sh that could have been a win. All I had to do was attack out. Um, I had lethal, but I, I went for going for more damage because, you know, like, those Aurelian Soul decks usually play, like, their Guiding Touches and Star Shapings. And, you know, like, trying for exact lethal isn't, um, doesn't always work. And so I, I did, but I made the wrong play, right? Like, I, I, I did. It was the wrong play. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're one decision away. If I just open attack, we're one open attack away from a 5-0 there with Talia's Fortune. So there we go. So as far as Talia decks go, this is definitely the Talia deck I've had the most success with for sure. You know, we were able to copy the Sandswept Tomb one time with the Talia. We were able to copy some other stuff. We were able to copy Preservarium once and draw a ton of cards. That was pretty cool. Um, but all this like vulnerable stuff worked really well with Misfortune, right? Like Hired Gun and Rock, like Rockhopper was actually pretty good. Like Hired Gun, Rockhopper, Jaw Hunters, all the three of those cards were all very solid uh, to go along with Misfortune. Um, and then, you know, you have your Island Navigator and stuff like that. The Ride Negation was came in clutch. I, I didn't realize we were only playing one Ride Negation because we had that Ride Negation quite a bit and it, it was coming in clutch. Hourglass was coming in clutch. We used Hourglass quite a bit. Like, we saved a bunch of stuff with Hourglass. Uh, that card actually worked really well. So there we go. So, you know, again, don't don't expect this to be, like, an amazing deck for ranked or anything like that. But as far as Talia deck goes, this is definitely the best one that I've ever played. So, um, yeah, that's, that's good. All right, 4-1 for Talia's Fortune. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, as always... Feel free to leave those comments. If you have another Talia deck that you've been playing and ranked, if you've figured out how to play Talia and have a lot of success with it, feel free to leave those comments. Or if you just want to, you know, or if not, try this deck out too. And let me know how it goes. I'd love to see the comments. Let me know uh, how y'all think about this one as far as a Talia deck goes. Yeah. All right, but that's all I got here for this deck. So thank you so much for watching some Talia's Fortune. And I will see you for the next video.